Good morning, Magnus. Here's your machine, the Breville Barista Express BES870 in brushed stainless steel. So as you saw in the photos, it's in good condition, in and out. Uh, in this video, I'll be demonstrating and making a latte on it, uh, my morning latte. So uh, just to sort of, sort of teach you how to use the machine from beginning to end. When you first turn on the machine, it'll take about a minute for the boiler to reach temperature. You'll see the buttons light up when the boiler is up to temperature. This may take around a minute or less if the machine is already warmed up. Um, so the boiler is at 93 degrees now, but if you want to, the, the whole machine to be hot, you have to wait. Um, so you can make a coffee when the m machine reaches temperature right away, but it's recommended to warm it up uh, to improve your shot temperature and your shot taste. Uh, I would recommend either waiting 20 minutes, so if you keep your cup here, uh, for, for about 20 minutes or, or more, it'll get nice and warm. The porta filter will get nice and warm passively from the boiler. If you're in a hurry, uh, you can just do this quickly by running a blank shot. So just put your cup underneath. In the basket, there's no coffee, of course. So just put the basket, uh, sorry, put the handle on, put the cup underneath, and press the double. This is going to expedite the heating up process. Um, and sometimes it also cleans any sort of coffee grains or oils that are built up in the machine. So I recommend this step instead of waiting, to be honest. Uh, that's just me. So fill half of your cup or more if you want to. Um, I think I'm going to keep it there because the machine has been on for a while. Um, next, you want to... Dry the port filter, so grab a tissue or a towel, dry the port filter. Um, this here is the double basket. Your machine comes with all the other baskets, so the dual wall and the single wall. This is the single wall um, double shot. The dual wall ones are for um, either beginners who really don't want to mess with the settings of the grinder or don't want to um, buy coffee beans for whatever reason. Uh, that's an option, but for sort of more experienced coffee makers or for those wishing to get a better shot, the single wall variety is the better option. So I'm going to use my scale to measure 18 grams. You really don't have to stick to the numbers and measure every shot, but uh, I'm just going to do it for the video to show you what 18 grams looks like. It's sort of, I like to do it sometimes for consistency, or like when I'm trying a new bean, for example. So, the grinder at the moment is set at number 6, I think it's going to give us a good shot, um, I tried it last night at number 6 and it was okay. Um, so I'm just going to add some beans from my grinder, just give me a second. All right, so with the beans in, just quickly double check that my scale is turned on. Yep. So I'm gonna keep the grind size at number six. I'm gonna keep the grind amount at two o'clock. I'm gonna keep this, the filter size at single. I like to do the, the single twice instead of doing the double just once because I feel like if you stop halfway, press it down, it will reduce the mess uh, and make it more consistent. That's 9.8 grams, so slightly more than I was hoping for. So I usually do it 9 grams and then press it down with a tamper. So very lightly for the first time. And do another 9 grams. Great. Looks good. Um, this time. We got 9.4, so um, I think we keep it on the 12 o'clock mark and see how you go. So it should give you around 9 grams on the 12 o'clock mark. Um, if you want to use a scale, use a scale to measure, but it doesn't have to be exact from my experience. Um, So 
that's it. About 17 and a half. So that's okay. 17.8. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so I'm going to grab my tamper now. Before pressing down, you saw me distribute the coffee with my finger. You want to distribute the coffee before pressing it so that, you know, the pressure within the coffee is consistent. And then press it nice and firm. And as you see, it went down about a centimeter into the, into this, into the basket. And if you look at the depth of the tamper, that's about the depth that it went into. So the depth of this part on the tamper, the silver part. It's about the correct depth for these baskets. So it's a nice sort of rule of thumb to use if you're in a hurry, if you don't have a scale, you can just look at the depth of the tamper after you press it down. Now we've got 18 grams, about 18 grams. So it sunk in nicely. And just make sure it's flat, that there's no sort of uh, gaps or it's not leaning to one side. Or it's not wonky to one side. And also clean the edge before you lock it in. I'm just gonna flush. Okay. Now, these buttons here are programmable, so you can change them to whatever length you prefer. Um, from my experience and from using this machine countless times, the factory setting is a bit too long. So if you hold program, this button, if you hold it, it'll beep and it'll reset to factory values. Um, I feel like they're a bit too long, so especially for the double, it'll give you 60 grams of coffee instead of 40. So I think that's a bit too much. Um, and conversely for the single, it'll only give you about 25 or 30 grams instead of the full 40 grams that I usually aim for. So yeah, I like to reprogram these uh, the button when I uh, make this video. So I'll show you how to reprogram. It's quite easy. So make make your coffee, grind your coffee, press it down, put put on the port filter, and after that you can program the button. You don't want to program the button just with hot water. You want to program it with coffee actually, um, so that it can give you what you want. We need a bit of hot water. We've got the hot water tap here. If you like to add syrups or sugars, um, now is the time. I like to add a bit of sugar to my coffee. Or lattes, let's say. Okay. Again, I'm going to reset my scale. And now we can make the coffee. I'm also going to time it because um, time is important. So the coffee recipe is a two to one recipe that I'm going to use. So for every gram you put in, you want to get two grams out. We put in 18, we want to get 36 out. So anything around 35 to 40 grams, I'll be happy with. We want that doubling to happen in around 25 seconds from the bottom press. We don't want it to take five seconds or 10 seconds. We don't want it to take, we don't want it to take uh, a minute to extract the coffee to get 36 grams. So it should be in the right time for us to get a good shot. Uh, again, I repeat, you don't have to stick to the numbers. It's just a guide for you to get a good coffee, especially as a beginner, if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but in the end, what matters is the taste. So just do whatever tastes better. To program, this is what, how you do it. Program. Press the button you want to program. So double. I'm going to stop it when I'm happy with the volume. Keep an eye. Keep an eye on the pressure and the flow. Pressure is a bit too high. It's around 1 o'clock. A bit more than 1 o'clock. Uh, so that means maybe my grind size is a bit too fine. But the coffee's flowing nicely anyway, so we've got a nice, smooth, symmetrical flow. I'm not sure if you can see. We've got some nice crema as well. I'm going to let it go for another few seconds. That's 30 seconds. 35 seconds. I'm going to stop it there. That's 35 seconds, and just let it drip. How much did we get? 
Okay. So I let it run for a bit too long. That was uh, 50 grams of coffee. Um, I guess it was a bit deceiving with the width of the cup. But yeah, so that was 50 seconds. It's still better than the 60 grams. Sorry, that was 50 grams. Still better than the 60 grams that the machine gives us usually. Um, but it's a bit too long, so with a longer shot, you would get maybe more sour notes and a weaker taste. So if I were to do this again, I would probably do it at, with a scale underneath uh, or my espresso shot. So my espresso mug, um, usually half of my mug. So sorry, it's a bit dirty, but around half of this mug is around um, 35 grams. So yeah, I would get a scale or a calibrated, a graduated cup to measure this. But anyway, uh, that's the coffee. Let's not waste too much time. Um, I guess I should have stopped it at the 25 second mark rather than the 35 second mark. Then we probably would have gotten a better, a better um, shot. Take out your port filter and knock it into the bin or the knock box. The single wall baskets are very easy to knock. I didn't even knock, it just fell on its own. Um, you also want to clean, so rinse by pressing the double button. This is going to rinse your port filter and your shower screen. Well, also, I like to grab a tissue every now and then and wipe the shower screen and the seal. Sometimes there's a bit of residual coffee grounds that stay up there even after flushing. So just you with a tissue or a towel, just wipe the seal, wipe the, the shower screen. And yeah, that's out. Leave it there. You don't have to lock it in all the way if you're not making coffee. So just there. And next, let's steam. So I'm gonna grab my milk jug. You wanna get a metal milk milk jug so that you can feel the you feel the sides and the temperature of the milk. Fill it halfway with cold milk. So after you turn it on by about 15 seconds, it will start steaming. Turn it on. Position your drug. Turn it back on. Keep the milk spinning, keep the tip of the of the wand close to the edge and keep the wand close to the um sorry, close to the surface of the milk so that it injects air as it spins the milk. Do, do this position for about 20 seconds. The noise that it should make at first is almost like tearing a piece of paper. It's like a hissing sort of noise. And then after that I'm going to raise the jug. So we don't want to inject too much air, otherwise the milk will become too bubbly. After you dunk the wand, just hold position, keep it spinning. Spinning around the jug. And stop it when it's too hot to touch. So, if you've got a thermometer that usually is about 55, 60 degrees. Give, give the wand a good turn, just to clean the inside, and then when you turn it off, if you give it 5 seconds, it'll go back to espresso, espresso mode. There we go, give it a good wipe, you want to wipe it ASAP, don't want to wait, um, the more you wait, the harder it is to clean, um, and obviously the wand metal the metal here gets really, really hot, so the milk will sort of bake onto it. If you don't clean it right away, it'll give you a headache later on. Plus, it might clog your wand as well, so better clean it sooner than later. Yeah, so that was, uh, that was a good texture. I think I, um, I'm not going to do any latte art. With this machine, it's definitely possible to do some latte art with some practice.
very nice and smooth. Uh, if the milk has any bubbles, do what I'm doing now. So knock it on the counter to break any big air bubbles and then swirl it around to mix it up. You want it to look like melted ice cream or wet paint. That's what I think it looks like. And then pour. So it looks like more of a cappuccino, honestly, because I made the milk a bit too thick. But yeah, it doesn't mean that it's not going to taste good. This is what it looks like. Definitely looking forward to having that shot. Um, but yeah, if you're more skilled than myself, you can do some latte art and patterns easy. Um, and that's the machine. Yeah, hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Take care.